guys in this video we want to look at the healing wound healing till now we saw wound and types of wound now we will look at the healing of wound okay so there is primary intention and secondary intention healing by primary intention healing by secondary intention are you looking guys so let us look at primary intention and secondary intention this is primary intention and this secondary intention wound healing primary intention what you observe they have put sutures there is a clean cut and you have approximated both the uh, Uh, sides right and there are sutures and there's only a hairline scar at the end this is a primary intention what is secondary intention secondary intention means see there is uh, infection and uh, you know it heals with a ugly scar so that is a secondary intention wound healing look at this primary intention occurs when there is clean incised wounds like a surgical intention uh, there is only a, a, a potential space between the edges so there will be clean neat thin scar so basically the two ends are approximated right they are they are close to each other so there is uh, they will heal properly clean neat thin scar but secondary intention is where the wound right there uh, there is wound with skin loss there is it's infected or there is discharging pus such wounds will in, uh, heal with ugly scar so that is one uh, classification of healing of wound okay so what are the components of wound healing guys so basically you have four things in this uh, you have the uh, inflammatory phase then you have the proliferative phase then you have the re what is that um remodeling phase yeah remodeling or maturation phase and finally you have this phase of scar formation okay so what are the four things you have to remember inflammatory proliferative is it remodeling and phase of scar formation wait so look at this first you got injured there is uh, uh bleeding then there is blood clot right then they have the inflammatory phase and then you have the proliferative phase where there's wound contraction and all that then you have the remodeling right then uh, there can be a scar okay so what and all you have to remember inflammatory proliferative remodeling phase of scar according to the textbook so this inflammatory phase they are also calling as lag phase here there will be a release of mediators of inflammation like histamine will be there right mast cells granulocytes you have to write all these these are the mediators of inflammation so you have to write these are you focusing guys okay then later who and all are coming kinins prostaglandins are coming they will uh, uh, attract white cells and fibroblasts what do they do they will uh, play a chemotactic role for white cells and fibroblasts so all the white cells and fibroblasts have now come in the first 48 hours all these uh, neutrophils they will uh, dominate they play a role of scavengers by removing the dead and necrotic tissue more like macrophages isn't it so what is happening in the inflammatory phase guys in the inflammatory phase you have a lot of inflammatory inflammation mediators like you have the histamine then you have uh, prostaglandins what else did they mention mast cells then so many things these will uh, then bring home the fibroblasts will come the white blood cells will come the neutrophils will play a major role they will do removing of all these uh, necrotic material etc who is coming neutrophils neutrophils are called polymorphonuclear cells because they have so many nuclei isn't that all of them will come so there's a stage of inflammation then this is also called as lag phase it seems slowly it is going to uh do this is it but it's only for 48 hours right but anyways they're calling it as lag phase next we'll go to proliferative phase that is collagen phase now you have to bring the collagen and repair right so the third to fifth days this is when they are saying the the neutrophils will diminish uh, etc then the monocytes will increase they are saying okay these are specialized scavengers neutrophils were like initial scavengers now specialized scavengers are coming that's the monocytes uh, okay then what happens fifth to sixth day they have gone to the next two days then fibroblasts appear but i thought fibroblasts were there before also and they proliferate and eventually gives to rise to protocollagen which then converted into what i think collagen what else can protocollagen convert to yes they are converting into collagen looks like here we are they converting into collagen in the presence of enzyme called as protocollagen hydroxylase okay so here they are showing you protocollagen is becoming collagen this is where in the proliferative phase who is coming fibroblasts are proliferating then they have some enzyme here protocollagen hydroxylase this is a hydroxylation okay and who and all are important for the step you need oxygen you need ferrous iron ions and ascorbic acid that is vitamin c right so that is why for healing they give vitamin c looks like and you have iron ions also so oxygen iron vitamin c all these are required for this step okay guys are you focusing what are we looking at we are looking at wound healing yes which which one are we in we are in the proliferative phase okay then some secretions are happening guys focus 
Now what happens? There is something called as proteoglycans. These are secreted so that there is binding of these collagen fibers. Remember, you had proto collagen. Now that became collagen. Now so many collagens, they have to bind them together. So you have this proteoglycans. Thus, wound. What is wound? Wound is fiber plus gel plus fluid system. Fiber is what is collagen. Gel is what. Fluid system is what. Resemble iron rod, cement, and water. Okay. Okay, guys. Then epithelialization occurs mainly from the edges of the wound by a process of cell migration and cell multiplication. So the wound doesn't heal from center first. It heals from the edge. Looks like. So then, then it comes heals here and then here and then here. Okay, so that's what epithelialization is occurring from the edges, mainly from the edges itself. You understood, guys? Which phase are we in now? Can you tell? We finish uh, this inflammatory. Now we have moved to the proliferative stage. Proliferative stage: fibroblasts are proliferating, collagen, uh, protocollagen became collagen. Then you had some proteoglycan, some cement kind of fluid kind of uh, some uh, concept. They told you how it is working. Then um, all this is happening. Epithelialization. So the next one is what, guys? You guessed right. Yes, it's the remodeling, the maturation phase. Here you have specialized fibroblasts called as myofibroblasts. These are contractile elements. So wound contraction occurs. There is a reduction in the size of the defect. Okay, and they're telling you where and all it occurs nicely. Also, they are mentioning that if you give some things, then it will not heal properly. What are those things like steroids? If you give a uh, chemotherapy, irradiation, radiation. If you give all this, that time there will be uh, delay. Delay wound contraction will happen. Okay, what is this? Formation of granulation tissue is the more most important and fundamental step in wound healing. As soon as you have heard granulation word, you know it is about healing, isn't it? Okay, contract concrete slab laying. It is granulation tissue. Uh, okay, so guys, what did they tell you? They told you about remodeling. Remodeling. Here they are telling you. Let's zoom in a little. After proliferative, we went to remodeling. Okay. Way too much of zoom. So in remodeling, they told you that there is wound contraction, right? What else did they tell you? The granulation tissue is very important. The textbook adds one more phase, guys. That is scar formation. So let's look at the scar formation. So scar formation means, see, um, see, the wound will achieve uh, maximum strength by twelve weeks. It will achieve only about eighty percent of its uh, initial strength. Okay, and uh, some of these can leave scars, right? So the types of scars are. In primary intention, they told you about some hairline scar. Remember, so basically here collagen is more vascularity will become less, so it will it'll be less red. Definitely, you will write that in the exam. Epithelialization continues, right? In growth of lymphatics, nerves and all will start uh, developing again, right? That's what they are telling here. But sometimes it is not like this uh, fairy tale story. Sometimes it becomes uh, complicated. What will happen? Infection can be a complication. Ugly scar can be there. Right, uh, uh, ugly scar means you can have a trophic scar, you can have hypertrophic scar, you can have keloid, right? So you can have all these type of abdominal scars. But right? there could be a hernia from this incision, from this uh, weak wound, right? Pigmentation, over pigmentation can happen. Then you can have margulans ulcer. What is this? So they're showing you a margulans ulcer refers to aggressive ulcerating squamous cell carcinoma presenting in an area of previously traumatized, chronically inflamed or scarred skin. So it's a malignancy, is it? Because it says carcinoma. Wow. See here, they are saying margulin also is less malignant. That means it's malignant, isn't it? Less malignant still means malignant, isn't it? Squamous cell carcinoma is more malignant. Interesting. And there's a pearl of wisdom here. Margulin, margulin, or however you pronounce it, margulin also, if it infiltrates normal skin, it behaves like squamous cell carcinoma. Okay, guys. So we looked at the complications of wound healing: infection to scars, to pigmentation, to hernia, to um, uh, margulans ulcer, which is a less malignant condition. All these are complications of wound healing. Guys, look at this inflammatory or proliferatory phases. How they have explained here: first, there is wound inflammatory phase, then bleeding as occurring, vasoconstriction, thrombus, a clot is formed, so hemoglobin. Hemostasis. Then platelets are released. You have platelet-derived growth factors. Platelet factor of four, isn't it? This is transforming growth factors. So you have neutrophils, macrophages, and these will come and eat those necrotic or devitalized tissues. So only thing new for us here is platelets, vasoconstriction, thrombus, platelet factor four, growth factor, transforming growth factor beta. Then you have the same thing: neutrophils and macrophages coming and eating. So only thing I'm seeing here is PGDF, that is 
platelet derived growth factor platelet factor 4 and uh, transforming growth factor beta so if they ask you the phases of wound healing you'll have to probably remember these three extra things also next video we look at the factors affecting wound healing what do you say guys Yes, there is uh, one more table here as to how the wound healing uh, happens. Look at this, day 0 to 1, 0 to 20, uh, 2 days, 48 to 96 hours and 5 to 7 days. Okay, so initially you have platelets and all the hemostasis, right. So, you will talk about the uh, platelet aggregation, inflammatory medias are coming. Then you have the polymorphonuclear cells, this is your neutrophil, it will macrophage everything and there is epithelialization. Then you have again macrophages, then phagocytosis. They are talking about macrophages here. This is a monocyte, is it? What is this? With the bean shaped. Specialized macrophages. Okay, then what happens? The fibroblasts appear. There's granulation tissue, very important. Granulation tissue you mentioned, okay, in the exam, if they ask you wound healing, then uh, they are talking about lymphocytes here. It's not very clear, though they don't know what happens. Then wound uh, contraction they are talking about, okay. Some things extra you can write guys, what happens when you have a wound and how does it heal, right? See, there is a response to injury. There is a neuroendocrinal response, an immunological response and a metabolic response. So, neuroendocrine response means what? Some hormones are released more. Some hormones are secreted more, less. Okay, all that you should know. Then immunological means some, uh, you have innate immunity, you have adaptive immunity, you know all these, right? Acquired immunity, etc. And then what is this metabolic response? Anyways, guys, look at this, okay, hormones whose level rise after an injury, you will have more uh, corticos, uh, adrenal corticotrophic hormone, is it? You will have more of cortisol, adrenaline will become more, glucagon will more, growth hormone also is more, is it, after injury, okay. Then uh, some cytokines will be there like 1, 6, interleukin 1, 6, 8, all then this tumor necrosis factor alpha, isn't it, this is. So, let's remember these pro-inflammatory ones, let's remember and hormones whose level for, uh, increase, that's also we'll, that also we'll try to remember. Adrenaline, I think you will write growth hormone, ACTH, you can write cortisol, you can write glucagon, you can write. What does glucagon do guys? It is kind of opposite of insulin, right? So, it will increase the glucose level, glucagon, right? So, did you understand guys? So, if somebody asks you wound healing and all, repair, injury, uh, all that, you can write this also. Metabolic response to injury also the textbook has mentioned guys, uh, ex energy expenditure, changes in skeletal muscle, liver protein metabolism, what and all is happening. Majorly you focus on this guys, whenever there is stress the liver synthesizes fibrinogen and C-reactive protein and more and it will suppress uh, albumin secretion. So you remember this much, okay, fibrinogen and C-reactive protein are secreted more during stress, okay.